Rampant speculation alert. I just saw this. Ford says drivers will be able to take their eyes off the road in two years. CEO Jim Farley sees cars becoming rolling offices with new feature. He says the vehicle will take over while drivers can look away. This, by the way, the same Jim Farley leading Ford, who's praised Elon Musk, admitted that Tesla's a leader. They're learning a lot from Tesla. He looks up to Elon Musk. They look up to Tesla. Tesla has incredible technology, great engineering. It's very impressive. Also, the first automaker to announce a formal partnership with Tesla, the North American charging standard and the supercharger network. I don't know why I mentioned that. Ford is just two years away from offering technology that will allow drivers to take their eyes off the road and their hands off the wheel, according to Chief Executive Officer Jim Farley. Quote, we're getting really close, Farley said in an interview with Doomberg. Quote, we can do it now pretty regularly with a prototype, but doing it in a cost-effective way is just the progress we're going to need to make. So let me just ask a question at this juncture. I haven't read the article yet. This is why I do this in real time, get my genuine reaction. But riddle me this. Is it possible? Is it possible that Jim Farley is referring to a prototype vehicle running Tesla FSD with a Tesla computer? The reason I ask this question is because it is inevitable that in the future, Ford will announce that they're going to be licensing Tesla FSD. Tesla's also disclosed that they've already had conversations with one major automotive manufacturer regarding the licensing of FSD. Ford were the first to join the supercharging network. They have that whole partnership and then everyone followed. Now, let's just try to pass this closely. Ford believes they're two years away from offering the technology. How long does it take to develop a new vehicle, a new platform? To finish the prototype designs, then the production systems, then put it into production, then begin first deliveries. Uh, let's see. Best case, about two years. Fascinating. And Tesla announced that they'd had the discussions about licensing FSD maybe a year ago. So that would line up with Ford, hey, Tesla, yo, uh, this whole FSD thing, we realize we're not going to solve it ourselves. Can we organize something? Then there would have been discussions. Tesla's like, yep, yeah, sure. But you'll need to put some cameras on the vehicle. We'll need to have some collaboration between our engineers. You'll need to run a Tesla computer, actually put the computer inside the vehicle so you can actually run the software. Could it be that a prototype vehicle for Tesla-powered FSD in a Ford is entering production with first deliveries expected within two years? Because, ladies and gentlemen, if so, this will be a very big deal, especially if you're in Tesla stock. Now, let's continue. We can do it now pretty regularly with a prototype. So, question, can you pretty regularly in a Tesla vehicle now with FSD beta, in theory, take your eyes off the road, your hands off the wheel. I'm not saying that you should constantly be doing this, but is it possible in Tesla running FSD now to do it pretty regularly? Spoiler alert, yes. He continues, but doing it in a cost-effective way is just the progress we're going to need to make. So again, you know why it needs to be cost-effective? Because you can't mass produce a vehicle with thousands of dollars of additional expense if you're barely making any money or in Ford's case, losing tens of thousands of dollars per electric vehicle sold. All in, they're up for a few thousand dollars of additional cost for the self-driving computer plus the cameras. So is it possible that Ford are now trying to engineer and design the manufacturing systems to actually drive enough cost out of these vehicles that they can cover them in the sensors, include the computer, and not lose staggering amounts of money doing so. Maybe there'll be more hints later in this article. Farley believes Ford can make that progress quickly enough to be offering the feature in 2026. Is it possible that that's the agreement they've made with Tesla, tentatively? Which could make it the first mass market car brand to offer what the auto engineers call level three autonomy. That's where the car takes over the driving task under certain conditions, enabling the driver to divert their attention to other tasks. Quote, Level 3 autonomy will allow you to go hands and eyes off the road on the highway in a couple of years. So then your car becomes like an office, Farley said. Quote, You could do a conference call and all sorts of stuff. Indeed. Ford and other automakers, including Government Motors, currently offer hands-free driving features, but those use eye tracking devices to make sure the driver remains focused on the road ahead, as opposed to receiving road ahead. But what? Ford's system, called Blue Cruise, is currently under investigation by a US safety regulator. Well, yeah, there's always investigations, okay, whatever, let's move on. Investigations don't mean shit. Findings mean shit. Tesla and others are also being probed by federal authorities. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Farley's prediction comes less than two years after Ford shut down its autonomous affiliate, Argo AI, because it said achieving full self-driving was too far off. Hmm. I speculated and now I'm extremely confident. Well, not actually, but I call about like, let's call it between 69 to 80% confidence, somewhere in that range that this is an FSD deal with Tesla. Again, two years ago, not even, Ford shuts down Argo AI and claims the reason is because achieving FSD is too far off. This was a smart move from Ford, by the way. What's the point of throwing billions of dollars at a dumpster fire that's never going to succeed? 
But the question is, if less than two years ago, Ford shuts down its own self-driving effort because it's too far away, they give up. And then maybe 12 months after that, Tesla mentions that they've had discussions with a large automotive manufacturer about licensing FSD. And then timing-wise, we hear from Ford that they're confident roughly two years from now, they'll have a vehicle on the market that allows you to take your eyes and hands off things, not pay attention and so on. I mean, this is a pretty strong few breadcrumbs to follow, folks. Now, to take the opposite side, somebody might say, well, Stephen, you're, you're dumb. Ford have just figured out a whole totally new way to achieve autonomy out of nowhere from scratch in like a year and a half, maybe two years flat. Don't you understand? Everyone's just going to press the magic catch up and Tesla button and solve autonomy at the same time, you dumbass. Get Elon's eggplant out of your mouth. Um, uh, so I just thought I'd point out, maybe it's possible that Ford have miraculously <laughs> done what Tesla's taken nearly a decade to do in 20% of the time, despite having 20% of the talent at most. Mercedes-Benz last year began offering an eyes-off-the-road feature in the US, but it only operates at speeds below 40 miles per hour on pre-approved freeways and dude... Yeah, it's a little dicey too. Farley suggested Ford's system would operate at speeds of up to 80 miles per hour on the highway, but only under clear skies. Now, did Farley actually say this is a Ford piece of technology? I've yet to see any disclosure about this. He's just saying that Ford would offer a vehicle that has the ability via software, he didn't say whose software, for users to take their hands off the wheel and their eyes off the road. Quote, we only think we can do it on sunny days, Farley said. Heavy rain and stuff makes it difficult to do at 80 miles an hour. Now, um, question, question. If Ford were pursuing a strategy of everyone else with 400 trillion different sensors, rain wouldn't be a problem. Heavy rain wouldn't be a problem. By the way, uh, just for the record, humans who use vision only, when it's pissing down rain, we also have to pull over too unless we're a dumb fuck and want to get ourselves killed or others, right? You've been driving and it's so fucking heavy, the rain, you just can't drive, you have to pull over. Exactly, we've all been there. Well, except for those of you who've never driven. So this is another hint that their system or the system that they're licensing may have limitations because it's based purely on vision. So that 69 to 80% is pushing up now to 69 to 85% confidence. By the time I get to the end of this article, there may be clarification, by the way, that it's a Ford system, but I'm sensing more clues about licensing FSD from Tesla. Ford is eager to generate recurring revenue by offering its drivers subscription services to features such as Blue Cruise. Now, again, this is by the person writing the article, not a quote from Farley, just to be clear. And by the way, Ford are pivoting towards software. They're trying. Let's continue. Farley sees those high margin software services smoothing out the boom and bust cycles in the car business. Ford is already selling software systems to its commercial customers to manage the logistics of their fleets. Farley sees semi-autonomous features like eyes off the road driving as a way to get individual retail customers to buy software subscriptions. Now, again, is this not exactly what Tesla's currently offering, give or take? FSD subscriptions to retail customers to buy software like hello now as i've speculated in the past and also included my tesla valuation model i believe that tesla's actually going to provide a very generous split for fsd in other words everyone will win because tesla it's basically free money out of thin air there's a little bit of time for their engineers to get the software up and running on these vehicles but then it's just software if they can incentivize automotive manufacturers to license fsd give them a generous cut to keep them in business everybody wins including consumers and humans who avoid a lot of accidents injuries and fatalities. Quote, Blue Cruise has been so much more popular than we expected, which is hands-free, Farley said. Oh, now this is huge. It's kind of the step before you get to eyes off. Another massive clue in my obviously extremely biased, deluded fanboy opinion. Why would he be describing Blue Cruise as a step prior to? It's as if it's an entirely independent piece of software, not the thing that's actually going to do the hands-free eyes off the road stuff, but an interim step. How curious. Now, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Am I imagining things? Or are these some relatively decent clues as to a possible FSD deal? I also heard rumors, and I covered them on the channel a couple of months ago, that Ford were planning to produce their own robo-taxi without a steering wheel and pedals a few years from now. Now, why on earth would Ford be doing that unless they were very confident that there'd be software available to run these things? You know what? Maybe they looked at Tesla and oh, shit. They're doing that autonomy day thing. They must be confident they're going to solve this problem. I mean, they're bidding tens of billions of dollars on this thing. So our only chance of surviving might be to do the same. I'm just, no, that would never happen. <laughs> so credit to Soya Mera for posting this article initially. It's where I came across it. Thought I might read a few of the comments. Looking forward to hearing Gary's thoughts on this. Historically, I've disagreed strongly with his comments around autonomy. Let's see what he's got to say here. 
I've argued for years that Tesla will be the first to master unsupervised FSD. On this, Gary, we completely agree. But due to how regulators work, <laughs> oh no, others will be approved for unsupervised FSD at about the same time as Tesla. <sighs> I'm just going to finish this post and then we'll, we'll talk about it. Autonomy will become a cost of doing business within two years. Either offer it or perish. Now, on that, I also agree. If you don't have autonomy, you're fucked. A couple of years from now, if others are offering it and you don't, you're fucked. One more time. No autonomy, fucked. So I agree on that too. I guarantee someone here will tell me I'm wrong because I don't have a tech background. Even though I have been right on this issue for years. <laughs> so I agree with a lot of what Gary said, but uh, one thing. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. This I take extreme issue with. Due to how regulators work, others, as in with their own software, will be approved for unsupervised FSD at about the same time as Tesla. Now, assuming Gary isn't referring to others licensing Tesla's software, riddle me this, Gary. Are you suggesting that others will come up with a comparably safe software and have sufficient data to demonstrate it's comparable in terms of its capability safety as Tesla FSD around the same time? Or alternatively, are you suggesting that regulators are so dumb they'll literally ignore Tesla's mountains of data showing their vehicles are two, three, five, ten, one trillion times safer than human drivers and save X amount of lives and you, they'll just completely ignore that and Tesla will get held up until a bunch of laggards also start knocking down the door going, hey, our software is actually way less safe than humans and kills lots of people. It's 10 times less safe, 10 times more fatalities and then suddenly everyone gets approved at the same time. I'm very confused here. I personally don't believe that Gary thinks that Tesla has what I would describe as an unassailable lead here. I think what Gary's suggesting, please correct me if I'm wrong, Gary. I think what Gary's suggesting is that everyone's just going to press the magic catch up to Tesla button and have a comparable product around the same time. Then everyone gets approval at the same time because solving autonomy is really easy. You just press the magic solve autonomy button. Now, I love Gary. He's a great, very interesting insight into how many folks on Wall Street think. Now, I can absolutely tell you from things that Gary said in the past which he acknowledges, people will say, I do not think he understands what is involved in solving vision and solving autonomy. I personally believe that Gary thinks this is just a product feature on screen now. The reason I say this is not just because my feelings told me, but because I've paid attention to what Gary has to say. Again, he's a really interesting insight, a bridge between people who've watched a lot of interviews with Dave Lee, James Dowmer, and a total nerds, and those who haven't. Check this out. Many Tesla FSD bulls have been tripping over each other to echo Elon's views that Teslas will be the first to be approved to drive themselves unsupervised and driverless for five years now. Now, just to be clear, I am not one of them. There are already robotaxis operating in small pockets of the world. Tesla's not first. What I've been saying consistently is that Tesla has an unassailable lead in terms of providing a generalized solution that will scale rapidly. It's not brittle. It doesn't have guardrails. You don't need to pre-map in HD. You don't need to use LiDAR. Because it looks out into the world, sees, perceives, plans, and acts. It's a real form of intelligence, as opposed to a little party trick like Cruise or Waymo do, where as long as nothing changes, everything's fine. But as soon as something changes, they become a death machine on wheels. And again, to be clear, the very first version of my Tesla valuation model published back in 2021, in which I didn't differentiate between the bull and the bear in the base case for when autonomy was solved, had the first rover taxi late 2024. If you want to see the latest, check the link in the pinned comment, join Patreon at the Investor level and above. I now distinguish between the bear case, the base case, and the bull case in terms of timing. I personally think we're probably 12 to 24 months away, most likely. Now, this is where things get, I would say, embarrassing, but that'd be rude. So I won't say embarrassing. I'd just say interesting. Oh, but wait, I did say embarrassing. Hmm. I've been consistent that Tesla will get there first, but others will get there soon after. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Uh, I'm not trying to be rude here, but fuck me, dad. This is amazing, dude. I just... Let me just read this slowly. I've been consistent that Tesla will get there first, but others will get there soon after as all innovations in the auto industry are quickly copied. <laughs> copied. <laughs> oh, I'm choking. Fuck. Dude, I need to take a sip of my electrolytes. Oh my fucking Jesus. Fuck. All innovations in the auto industry are quickly copied. Yes, that's right. Autonomy is comparable to the seatbelt or the airbag or power steering or automatic transmission or electric windows. I just, I mean, I, I just don't have the words. However, holy fuck, this takes the cake of all the things. Again, I respect Gary a lot, but holy shit, dude, he's in for a rude awakening. Now, again, just imagine if there are 
people managing money, analysts, institutional investors who happen to think the same way. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What I think I'm getting at is there's possibly an opportunity that may not be widely recognised by the market if people managing money for others, big and small, happen to think this way. Wow. Love you, Gary. But holy shit, dude. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. Plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens, now AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend, seriously, try Athletic Greens, you won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people, right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.